Okay. Hi, South Lake. I see you. Can y'all hear me, Jason? Yeah. Can South Lake, can you hear me? Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Okay, thanks. Just want to make sure y'all can hear. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. This is so exciting. Many of you know this has been something that's been in the works for a couple years. So we are glad to make this actually happen now that we're past the pandemic. We want to have this monthly. So Eric and I would love to know what you want to know from your fellow agents and who you want to know it from. So if you want to nominate someone for a panel, even if you want to nominate yourself, if you think you have a specialty, we'd love to. We specifically started with these three ladies because they're the utmost professionals and they do have a specialty that's in common with each other, which is being able to take a neighborhood and be identified in that subdivision or area as the expert. The clients believe it, um, the agents know it, everybody knows it. So we're here to talk to them kind of about how that is. And I wanted to start off, if it's okay, by saying thank you to Brian with WFG Title. He brought us some mimosas today. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. And he's even some frozen fruit for us and everything, so it's awesome. And then if you are hungry afterwards, Reliant is bringing cowboy chicken lunch. So we've got some lunch coming as well. We can stay and mingle and ask questions. This is a question-based program. We've got some questions that we thought you guys would want to know. And so we're going to have a casual conversation with these beautiful women. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll open it up for additional questions. But I think we might get a lot answered that you want to know. So let's start out by just introducing. We can just go this way. If you don't mind telling us your name, just in case somebody in the room doesn't know you, which office you're at, and anything that you think would help kick us off, but just your name and how long you've been in the business. Okay. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Sonia Leonard, work out of the South Lake office, <clears throat> and I've been with Remax for about 17 years, 16 years, licensed a couple of years on than that, so I got here as soon as I could. Happy to be here. Nice. Haley Howard, South Lake, um, likes since the end of 2014. Um, I'm Tina McNew. I am, I've been at Remax 12 years, going on 13, and um, I've been in the business 15 years. Work out of the weather for office right now. I love it. And just, can we just introduce my fellow moderator too? I know you guys all know me, but you're still getting to know Erica. Erica? Hi, Erica. Do you want to know how long I've been a realtor? Yeah. <laughs> how long have you been in the business? And, uh, well, I actually started with Remax Masters, so I know a few of the South Lake women from that, but I have been in real estate for eight years. Love it. Okay, well, thank you. And she's currently the business development person out here at Fort Worth and Weatherford. So if you need somebody else to go to besides me to talk about this stuff, she's your girl. So let's start out and you guys do not have to go in any particular order. You can kind of keep it casual, but just tell us how you chose the neighborhood that you are considered an expert in. Is it somewhere you live or did you actually have a method to choosing it? Anybody? <laughs> I live in the neighborhood that I okay. the most. So how long have you lived there? Five years, okay. And I started marketing to that neighborhood um, about two years prior, just doing a few giveaways here and there. Prior and to moving in? Prior to moving in. Oh, and I, I actually that. knew that that's when we wanted to purchase our first home. Okay. So now we've been there for five years and I'm a top selling agent in the neighborhood. And I get, I probably have sold 40 homes. And then the sell side too. So I'm getting a lot of renters that want to purchase or referrals just from neighbors that have family members that, so I do a lot of business out of Tacoma Ridge. That is awesome. Yeah. I have no clue you started marketing before you moved in. I, I think did. that gives all of us hope if we don't necessarily want to farm our specific neighborhood, you can farm your goal neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic. Who else wants to say? Tina? I'll go next. So I actually, when I was at the brokerage I was with previously, they did not train us to farm a neighborhood, to work your neighborhood, to have client appreciation parties. They didn't teach us anything like that. And um, I had a Christmas party for my entire neighborhood at our house when I first got in the business. And um, so my neighborhood kind of picked me. I'd sold a lot of houses in there because they were new construction. And um, so my neighborhood kind of picked me. I was like, oh gosh, this really works. This is easy wow. money to work my neighborhood. 
But what do you mean by that? They picked you. How did you know that you were so, going to start continuing to kind of lay seeds there? So I, I know this sounds like so silly, but I had one of the neighbors call me that I don't remember meeting. There were 50 houses in our neighborhood <laughs> and um, she came to our Christmas party. But there were like 150 people there. So I didn't specifically remember meeting them. Well, she called me and she said, I want you to put our house up for sale. And I said, oh, did have we met? She's like, yeah, I was at your Christmas party. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> right. There's like 150 people there. Was, I didn't remember. So yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great way to get business. So I just kind of carried that. You know, I sold a ton of houses in that neighborhood. The next neighborhood I moved to, I would do an ice cream social in the summer, have a big pool party. And I still sell a lot of houses in that neighborhood. And the neighborhood I live in now, I think about three and a half, four years. And um, I had already sold a ton of houses in that neighborhood. And I thought, you know, this is just going to keep my business going. I'm not necessarily the neighborhood I care to be in, but easy money. That's, That's great. Fine. Yeah. So sort of similar to Haley in that you're, you weren't even living in the one that you're in now when you actually started developing. Yeah. It. That's fantastic. Yeah. So okay. now, so since that first, you know, that I told you about, I have really learned to farm the neighborhoods really hard so and just work them and it's it's a great way to get business and what about you sonia how'd you pick your neighborhood well um so i when i very first started selling farming a neighborhood was a thing you know you get all these different suggestions on how you work and i think i'd like to speak to the picking the neighborhood question mm -hmm. because i think things have changed we used to say, pick a neighborhood, doesn't matter where it is, you know, one that you love or drive by or the price point that you want to sell at. Make sure it turns over reasonably frequently. There's statistics that suggest what a good neighborhood is, the price point that you want to sell, and then you just go all out and market that. But I think that worked in the past. But what I have found more recently is that social media plays a big part in reaching people. And so what I have benefited from is living in the neighborhood and being available and accessible to the Facebook page of the community. And I wouldn't have had the success I've had in my community without the Facebook. Yes. So I do think living oh. in the neighborhood now plays a lot more, brings a lot more weight than it did in the past. Um, there's other ways to still connect, obviously, but that's a layering. You, and it all is about layering, and we can talk about that. But being available and able to post on you really can't typically can't be a member of that Facebook page unless you have a house in that neighborhood. So I think that can be a, a real big question on whether that's going to work for you or not. So did all of you come into an existing social media group or did you start one or mine's all social media. I don't okay. send on a mail or a postcard, nothing. It is all social media. Okay. So it's our neighborhood Facebook page. Was the neighborhood Facebook page already there before you got in? Yes. And okay. I just slipped in there. I joined the group before I lived there and they <laughs> kept me there and I kept a little profile <laughs> until I Probably actually was a homeowner there. Your name was in there. And then I really went, then I was more consistent with my giveaways and things like that. Okay. After I was a homeowner. And yours was not there. It was not there. You started I it? I created it. Okay. And so we started having events. So I created the neighborhood Facebook page and I was at a homeowners association meeting and they said, hey, you should run our um, social committee. I was like, I didn't know we had a social committee. And they're like, well, we haven't for about five years. And that was the last thing I wanted to do because I'm not typically a social person, but I thought, well, this is going to be good for my business. So Says the woman it. who had a Christmas party with 150 people. <laughs> I was over. I'm not a social person. So. They really did pick you. They literally said, "Please come." Yes, they did. They did. So I can't believe my neighborhood. It's just a track home neighborhood. It's nothing special. Um, 380 something houses, I believe. And um, so, yeah, they didn't have a Facebook page. I couldn't believe it. So I I talked to some of the other agents in our office that have really active neighborhood so uh, Facebook pages. And they gave me some great suggestions. And that was about a year and a half ago. Okay. So I started the page. So when we would have our events, I would, uh, we started out, I recruited a couple of girls to help me and we would pass out flyers and we created a QR code to join the Facebook page. So our Facebook page has almost 400 people in it now. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's grown really, it's grown really well. Well, and you just touched on the number of homes in your subdivision. How many about homes are in these subdivisions? 1,100. Oh, good Lord, oh, girl. Gosh. Wow. Yeah. 
you are like a full-time farmer. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, I, I don't traditionally farm. I yes. mean, you would laugh at some of the stuff that I do, but it's work. So it I'll works. share that. But so okay. my neighborhood is 500 homes. Okay. And actually to the question, did I live there first? I actually lived in the neighborhood right next door to this one for two years before I moved. And I've been in my neighborhood for just over two years. So I moved next door and it was a really small neighborhood. It was too small really to farm. And, and then- What do you mean by too small? Well, it was only uh, less than 200 houses, I think it was. Okay. I mean, really it was like three streets, but it did give me a good footprint. Don't be the expert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's too small because nobody will mail to that. If you're gonna do mailing, which we can talk about with my mailing inside of that. So I have this layering approach, it's not all social media, like Haiti, so social media is part of it, but I started off with the mail, in the mail. Okay. And to, that the, to the bigger neighborhood. To the small one, because I live there, okay. this one said, that's rubbish, it's not even built out, you don't, you don't, no one's gonna buy or sell in there, and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I did it there, because I lived there, and then I bolted <coughs> into a bigger neighborhood next door, which was still being built. And then now I kind of flipped to just where I live, because I moved into that one. Mm -hmm. But the, the mailing piece I wanted to mention because some of you, we have, we have handouts. If you want to look at it for real, I really would like to just pass it around and feel it because the quality of this is what I think speaks to elevating me as somebody who's a professional in that. So we get other things in the mail, because I live there, that are like, oh, this just shows how different my piece is, you know, when there's just printed on a piece of paper. But that mailing is something that I do, it's a monthly piece. And right now it goes out to all my 500 houses in my neighborhood. And I know people keep it because when I do get to go into someone's house, they, you know, yes. they've got the stack there. And Martha's oh, not a warm fuzzy. <laughs> but here's a testimony from last night. I'm like, oh, I have something to say. Last night, our ladies went out for a happy hour. It was about 15 or 16 of us. And two people I didn't know. So the people that had brought them were introducing these new ladies to everybody. So twice I got intro introduced. This is Sonia. You'll know her from her mail. Ooh. I'm like, yes. Yeah. You know, out of a test case of 16 people, I thought that was that just blew me away. That's excellent. And since we just passed it before the Southwick and the Weatherford agents got to see what was in it, uh, Jean, what's in that? This is her first quarter review. Okay. Can y'all hear Jean in Southwick and Weatherford? Oh. Her real estate market report. So it's got um, pending homes and has all of the recently sold homes. It's got a great little map here that shows the 13 homes that were recently sold, um, the average days on market, and the average sold price with everything's sort of listed. And what's on the back? And then on the back, she's got the uh, 11 picture and um, the first quarter sales trends. So it's got how many homes sold, average sold price, average days on market, average sold price to list price ratio. And then down below that, she has quarter one, 2021 for comparison. So for those who are not in this room with us, it's, it's mostly market statistics, but also there's some warm fluff to it. She has on the front, it has exactly who it's addressed to in the neighborhood. It doesn't look like just a spam piece. It's got their first and last names of both parties that live in the house. And then she's got some pictures of the subdivision to kind of draw in attention. We'll bring a copy of that to South Lake and to Weatherford for y'all to check out too, if she has some extra that we can share. So the deal about that, I don't want to really um, monopolize this whole conversation with my mailing, but there's just a couple of things that I want to mention while we're on this topic is that costs a dollar a piece, which is, I mean, that's mailed people, yeah. Like so for that quality, now you have to do 500. So, and there's a little setup fee you start with, but the point is that just goes out every month and I do not touch it. Once it's set up with the photographs, the content is is researched and printed by the printer. I don't have to touch that thing. Now I can, if I want to customize one and pay more, I'm like, well, now I'm paying more and doing more. So I'm like, no, a dollar is good. Um, it's it really just gets my face in front of people every month and it shows that I'm talking real estate. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a place on there for them to enter it into a website if they want a quick pricing. I get a few leads from that, but really it's just another layering the presence of the market expert who shows up for happy hour. So well. let's talk about presence because all of you have completely different approaches. 
how long did it take you to market in whatever way you're marketing before you felt like you were actually receiving results? Well, I can tell you farming has definitely changed because when I first started, there was a very specific way I was taught to do it. You do an eight by eight, you know, once a month, the, the statistics were for every 50 mailers you send out to a house over a year period, you should get one sale off of that. Oh my gosh. And um, my, uh, when I first started farming, I would farm other neighborhoods as well doing mailers. And my rate of return was higher than that. Mine was one to 37. And um, so it definitely paid for itself, but it is, it's changed a lot. The mailers now by themselves do not work. That's why I would only, that's why I only form the neighborhood I live in because the mailers just, they just tossed in the recycling. They are. Yeah. They just don't work like they used to. Yeah. And I think it's because social media and you have, in most neighborhoods, you have one agent who you know, kind of has a presence, kind of like Kayleen, Sonia, and myself in our neighborhoods. So it's like, it goes back to what Sonia said. You have to layer. You have to layer. Okay. I like that. Um, how long did it take before you felt like you were the expert though? In addition to layer of years. A couple of years? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. I just don't want anybody to think it's a, a we're going to open a Facebook group and then all of a sudden we're the neighborhood expert. So, and in Tina's case, she did get invited into the neighborhood, but we've heard both of these ladies say that they started farming their neighborhoods before they ever even moved into them. So that's a long process. This is called farming for a reason. I mean, it is, it's farming. You plant the seed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you plant the seed and walked away and came back a year later looking for something, you didn't have anything, right? But if you plant the seed and you nourish it, water it, tend it, be there, it will grow. It has to grow. It's a done deal. You know, you won't get 100% out of every seed, but you'll get something. And so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proven method as long as you invest in it with some, some money and so as far as some money and you're the only one right now that's doing print mailing the social is complimentary oh you do mm -hmm. okay is anybody using outside third-party sources to co-brand that to help with the cost i know that that's something that's available to agents so if you did not know that right on my piece you'll see there's a section there that a lender is a feature they approached me actually they live in the neighborhood and they called me up so we love this piece Can oh that's great they live I'm there sure. yeah <laughs> So they wanted to pay for my mailing. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so <laughs> oh, yes. I was trying to do the math. Um, if we don't count that sponsorship, the, I do 500 a month, so that's $500 pretty much over two years is about $12,000. And and I've been working it two years and I've made 121,000. So that's 10 times on the ROI, do the math. So, yep, find the neighborhood. That's amazing. <laughs> So how many years has all this been going on total? Because now it's taken you a couple of years to get there. How long have you been considered this neighborhood expert? That sounds like quite a stretch. It yeah, took a yes. couple of years to get to well, that I, position. I don't know. I've only been in there two and a half years. I hit the ground running pretty quickly as a new homeowner. because Probably because you guys had both. We had yeah, social things that wanted sponsoring. And so I, I don't know what I sponsored hot chocolate with sand or something you know so i tried to get out there and we did have a fair presence of agents in there that mandy can tell you i ran them all out mandy lives in my neighborhood too so she was just laughing like on the <laughs> <laughs> but they have all this slowed down i don't know and you have somebody sponsor yours as well? I do. You do not. Okay. So you, uh, what are you guys investing financially, if you don't mind asking? I know you said yours are a dollar a piece, but what are yours run? And what are they? Are they? I, mine are just the jumbo postmarks. Okay. Just to, just a layer. That's, it's not to get business. It's just a layer and face recognition mm -hmm. because I sponsor, I mean, I do a lot of events for our neighborhood since I'm on the committee, but I want people to be able to put a face with a name. That's the only reason why. I do it. And I don't know if it's something I'll continue over the years once I'm really established like Haley is, but um, I spent so about $150 a month. I'm yeah. about to. I spent, <laughs> no, I spent $150 a month. That's it. Okay. Which and yours fluctuates. I mean, she just laughed at me. No, I don't have any systems in place. I don't track any of that stuff. It's just random thoughts. So for me, I just have done social media giveaways and it's a mother's day giveaway or it's um it's a rainy day giveaway because everyone's sitting around they can't go outside so let's let's talk about something and they're interactive giveaways so it's like 
post a picture of something fun that you like to do when it's raining or something. So, I mean, oh, I, I love that. Just something, just and then people are interacting with each other and they're getting to know each other. Like, hey, I didn't know you that yeah. you were so and so's mom because they go to the same elementary school or whatever. So it's interactive. It's not just enter me. It's like post a picture of your sweetheart for like a Valentine's Day giveaway. I have a hundred dollar Perry gift card. So for me, it was just all giveaways. Like just it would be a random. But how do you day. decide who wins? So I put them in like random.org or I count them okay. up or I've done where I literally write every entry and there's been 170 entries and I hand write them and put them in a bowl and I have my daughter, I take a video of her drawing the winner. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just was that, it was random. It was every two months, every three months or then back to back and never tracked it. Sometimes it's 50 bucks. Sometimes it was a couple Starbucks gift cards. So I wasn't really adding value to anybody in the neighborhood as far as like oh, market stats yeah. and stuff. I was just doing giveaways and Haley Howard Remax Trinity. And so they could just remember my name. And then it became more, <coughs> I'd suggest vendors like, hey, I work with a lot of plumbers and I, this guy was wonderful. I just wanted to share it with you. Then it became more where people were reaching out personally all the time. Who do you have for flooring? Who do you have for plumbing? Who do you love for this? So now I've become a resource for people in the neighborhood and they trust my, my opinion and my experience with, with those types of things. I think it's definitely value added because you're creating community within your community, but also you're not just establishing yourself as business, you're establishing yourself as a family and a person who lives in their subdivision. Yes. They want to be your friend. And I comment on neighbor. every single entry. So I give them personal attention. I just don't let them enter. So I'm like replying under there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just be like, oh my, like, just like a rate, what's your favorite comfort food? And I'll post a picture of like a roast or something. Cause I like to cook, you know, people like, Oh, I love making I'm like, Oh, you know, share your recipe, you know, and then they'll share it. And everyone's like, Oh my gosh, I love that. My mom used to make that. So it's just interactive like that. That's so fun. Do you handle so, your, your gift cards? What's that? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I'll leave it at their door or whatever. Yeah. With my card and put it in a fancy bag or whatever. Um, so that's, but I also do like the chili cook off So our neighborhood and I was, and I participate. So I'm the spice, I'm with my girlfriend, we are the spice girls. Mm -hmm. So we would <laughs> win with our brisket chili like every year. So then the neighbors like, oh, we've been meaning to meet you. And so yes. I promoted the chili cook off and I sponsored it also. I brought in the bubble bus for Prosecco's and craft beer in the summer. Um, Pies. And my big my pies. So in no so I put 60 to 75 pies and I call it the pie patrol. Stack them in my SUV. I put an orange light on the top. <laughs> I tell everybody when I'm coming and my husband drives me. And they're in their camping chairs, their kids are running down the street and I'm handing out pies. So I've done that for five years. And it cost me like 400 bucks because they're Costco, they're six dollar pies. So everyone's like so huge. excited about the pie yeah. patrol every year. But what I love about that is you're already in your own neighborhood. So it's, yeah, it may cost you a little bit of money, but how cool is that? And you've got the hubs driving. So and I know the roads, like I can put myself here in my neighborhood. I know every street name of 1100 homes. Like I, I can tell you. So when I'm, when my husband's driving, I'm like, okay, I'm heading up Red Bluff. I'm going to turn the corner on my desk. So I'll watch for me. And so I keep it updated where I'm going. Um, and then my, my, uh, my big event is beer and bingo. So I bring in a keg, a couple of um, big coolers and some Costco snacks. We hire a DJ. And Does we anybody do else want to move into Haley's neighborhood right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, I want to move in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's my event. It's the HOA. They will pay for the DJ sometimes for me, which is awesome. Oh, nice. But I promote it and it's my event. And um, we have one social committee gal who will go and get gift cards or coupons from businesses, but I provide six packs, bottles of wine, tons of little gift cards for prizes, and we do cake stands at the end of the night. I mean, it is, it is fun. <laughs> Everyone gets babysitters, and we fill up our little amenity center, and it's a ball. How? And that's annual. Every year. And the pie thing is annual? Yes. Is there any recurring events? Or are they mostly, you get one a year type thing and then you've got, I just do random stuff. Like I'm going to bring in the Texas ice cream truck this summer okay. and I'll do it. Now I'm moving to North Lake. So we're building there. 
um, and it'll be ready in about a year. So I'm gonna probably send an ice cream truck there since we own the lot mm -hmm. and then bring one to my current. But I want to stay the expert of Tahoma Ridge. I'm trying to think of my exit strategy when I, once I don't live there. Mm -hmm. So I've created a Tahoma Ridge um, market info group that's I admin and I've advertised it on the neighborhood page because once I'm out of there, there's other realtors are going to mm -hmm. kick me. Once they know I'm not a resident anymore, they're going to kick me out of there. So I've, I've created a side one and I'm growing that. And now I'm doing market statistics within there. Here's that. all the new active listings. This one's an open door. This is why it's sitting for longer. It's overpriced and giving my advice and opinions on the current market situation. So I'm trying to build that up before I make my exit so I can still. Well, and establishes your that. whole range. I'm a mom, I'm your neighbor, I'm fun. But also, I can and help I'm you. Still, I'm still doing yes. a great job for you. I'm just not going to live here anymore. Yeah. So, but we're renting while we build in the neighborhood. I did Perfect. it on purpose because I wasn't, I do so much business there. Scared me to leave my neighborhood right now. That's a huge part of my income. So I have no doubt they will I'll not figure be able that to fill out. those shoes. So don't worry about that. <laughs> what about you ladies? What do you do? Because she brought up a great topic. What do you do? Extracurricular fun towards type social. Sonny has mentioned she does happy hour groups. Uh, we do all I do all different types of things. So tonight, for example, well, let me back up. So I started with my initial event did not cost me a penny. So I found a carriage okay. company. Yeah, I found a carriage company that would come out to the neighborhood. I got the free version of Calumly and I said, hey, we have carriage, uh, we have a carriage ride coming out this evening. It's five dollars per person per ride for 15 minutes. Um, I had somebody volunteer to be Santa and um, so I said, you have to contact me for your time slot because I want to meet these people. I don't mm -hmm. know a lot of the people. So uh, it was great. I had a food truck come out and um, coffee and beverage truck come out and everybody was like, oh my gosh, we've never seen anything like this, but it didn't cost me a penny. So, but I was able to meet a lot of people. The cost gets rolled right to them. You just organize it. And I like she said, you're creating community. I think that's mm -hmm. a big deal. And, and her going to these happy hours it's a consistency across all of you. You're not just, like you said, mailing yeah. and expecting that to work. You it are actually work. building a community. Yeah, the mailers alone do not work anymore. I've tried it in a few different neighborhoods, done it for a couple of years, and it's not like the good old days. And you recently right? did your spring event. I did. So we do a bunch of events. So we do the carriage ride. Like I said, did not cost me a penny. We just did it for our second year. It books up within 20 minutes. I mean, it's, it's just very well received. Um, our largest event is a Halloween event. Um, I had a couple, I recruited a couple girls to help me this year. And it was so fun because I said, what do you, what do you guys think we should do? We got the HOA to pay for some bounce houses. And one of the girls said, we should do a cakewalk. I was like, oh my gosh, that is uh, sounds like the greatest thing ever. The kids don't even know what a cakewalk is, okay? So <laughs> what is it? I don't know what it is. You don't know what a cakewalk is. I, don't know. I, I thought you said cakewalk. No. I know. No, I'm about the thing. She's not that bad. I'm like, there's a theme here with kids. No, a cakewalk. So I'll tell you what a cakewalk is in a second, but so one of the girls said, hey, let's do a cakewalk. I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I've been thought about a cakewalk since I was in elementary school. That thing was the hit of the neighborhood. So we have the city come, they walk off the streets, we get food trucks. I ordered some trophies and we had a costume contest. Like this thing was huge. We had, I don't know who all came, but it was definitely people outside of the neighborhood, but we think between four and 500 people. Wow. It was crazy. So yeah, everybody's talking about it. So in Easter, I'm like, oh, okay. so here's what the cakewalk is. You don't have to do long. Is there anybody else that doesn't know besides me? Thank oh, you, yeah. Kathy. <laughs> Sally and Weatherford, y'all both know what cakewalks are, I guess. <laughs> Tuesday's rolling her eyes at me. She knows I'm a nerd. Okay, so we got these little, I think she went to the dollar store and got him. The girl that I said, okay, you're going to run the cakewalk. So I don't want to run anything because I want to visit with everybody. So I del I'm i really good at delegating. So um, we just got these, like that's my thing. That's I want to delegate. It's important. So she got like these little round plastic things that 
that are like different colors and you spread them out in a big circle and you put a number on it. So it's almost like, um, what's that chair thing called? Musical, Musical chairs. chairs. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so you play the music, you walk around and you draw like a little bingo ball out. Okay, 17, that person wins a cake. And we, I had all the neighbors donate the baked goods. So that it, it didn't cost me a penny. How? And the and neighbors are like, but they're involved. Yeah, yes. all of this is involved, and they have to bring them to me. So it's like I'm meeting all these people that way. So we have that. We have the um, carriage event. We have the uh, Halloween. That we have an Easter egg hunt. Again, does not cost me a penny. I had. I um, I came up with this idea with a couple of the other neighbors. They we um egg our own yards, and then she created a map, a GPS map that you just put on your phone of every house in the neighborhood. I think our first year we did it. We had 40 houses, and this year I think we have close to 60 houses that participated. And then we set up a little craft table. I eat my son's an Easter bunny. I mean. Um, oh, and I was going to tell you oh, this. Too. I looked at you. She's yeah. a great Easter Bunny. If anybody needs one, <laughs> so um, she's joking. <laughs> and I was going to go back and <laughs> the kids love it. So I was going to um, back up and say. So this year, um, I bought a Grinch costume. It cost me seventy five dollars. I mean, everybody loves it. So it's just about getting the neighbors involved mm -hmm. so you can meet them. I love that. I kind of had a follow-up question for you. Y'all, both of y'all mentioned your HOAs helping out. Did y'all cultivate those relationships as well, or how did you get to that place? Because I know my HOA typically is a little salty when you call them. Oh yeah, yeah. what well, they all. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just persistent. I mean, it's okay if they have a cover. I'll cover. It's worth every penny for me. Yeah. But if they want to pitch in and hire the DJ, which are my beer and bingo is June tenth, and. That was in the cost of a few hundred dollars um, for three hours. And I booked them for an extra hour this year because nobody ever wants to leave. <laughs> so I'm like, we need you a little. Because he does trivia in between and plays all this music. It's so fun. And so they're going to cover it. And so I'm just paying for a $129 keg and I fill a big cooler and then some little Costco snacks, pretzels. And we get the movie theater to donate popcorn. So I put them in these build trays and put them all on the table and stuff. So really in all, it doesn't cost that much to this event and people talk about it all year. Yeah. So, and then everybody's, thank you, Haley Howard on the page. What a great night. And you get paid a thousand times. So it's like, even on their personal page, they're taking, we have so much fun in our neighborhood. Um, bingo night. Um, thank you, Haley Howard. If you ever need a realtor, you know, contact. So then that goes to their spheres. Then you had 150 people show up to bingo and they're sharing it on their own personal pages and then boom you just got your name a shout out from a lot of those people so we need to get you a bunch of hot air balloon daughters you know yeah. the no, bingo daughters and just <laughs> oh yeah that's a great idea so i can map my face or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i will say our hoa they're not we're budgeted for a social committee but they don't spend like getting money out of them is like this beating. Yeah. So what I did is I created these events where I really didn't have to spend a lot of money, which I would have if I needed to, because it's worth it. The yeah. But um, I created these events where I was meeting people. Well, I go to all the HOA meetings. And so now the neighbors are like, hey, we should get at the HOA meeting. I'll say, hey, we should get a bounce house. I'm like, well, let's talk to the board about re about reimbursing us for doing that. So I have the neighbors like on the board, like they like are just on, on them. We the need money. Us. We need money. She delegates. She yeah. did all <laughs> these. Yeah, she did all these events, and we need a Santa, and we needed this, and we needed that. So they're on top of it. I don't really have to even say much at all. So. So I can add a bit, if your HOA is a little political and they're not about to give you money or you don't feel like you have the ability to go in and do a whole event like these ladies, I haven't really done in my neighborhood yet big events like that, although I've been present at like the Ladies Happy Hour book club, just because you got to know the people, you know, they see your name, they make it the mailing, they see you on social media, but then when they meet face to face, that's when you start to be able to impress them with your ability to sell their home. But so there's a couple of things that don't cost anything that uh, you can control yourself. It doesn't involve events and HOA. One is the property taxes. So if you yes. post on your Facebook page when we get the property tax numbers, anybody need any help or advice over this, message me. The key is to get to meet them. 
not just to email them out as CMA because that is that's easy and ineffective. They've got the answer and you have got nothing. So what I used to do, and this was very successful in that small neighborhood that I said I lived in for two years. I went, um, when I posted there about property taxes, I told people if they want some help, message me their address. I got their address, phone number, called them up, told them that I would come over and I went. And so like for two or three weekends, I would go like nine, nine, thirty, ten, ten, thirty, 10, 30, like all these appointments, like seven or eight different appointments on that day, house to house, which was a small three street neighborhood. So I, I just yeah. drove it. So then I would go in and just talk to them and just, explain explain the bill in the first place because a lot of people don't even understand how it should be particularly where i lived there which were in two different counties so that was very confusing and then exemptions not everybody had their homestead some people didn't have other exemptions they qualified for i would help them with that and then that's now a great relationship to build from right, the value right so i did that in my new neighborhood last year I got to meet a bunch of new people and then those relationships developed and then the other day I did a post on our Facebook page. We had a house that sold that was over a million dollars. And that's the first over a million dollar house. was not my listing. I did not bring the buyer, but it was in my neighborhood. And I thought it was valuable information for the homeowners. So it's made this little generic post. Hey guys, we live in a million dollar neighborhood. You know, we didn't really think that's going to happen this fast. But if anybody wants to know how this impacts your property values, send me a message. Well, I got 16 messages. Wow. wow. People wanting wow. property. Was it people that you had already known, or are these a mix of? of them were, but okay. mostly not. That's great. And so I sent out 16 emails because now I felt like I couldn't really go to 16 people's houses because they want to be there now. So I did a video actually and explained what I was attaching, which was the tax rolls, the CMA, and let them know that a ballpark figure would be whatever I could determine, but that obviously every house was different and I would need to see your house. She wanted me to give you a more exact number mm -hmm. for listing. Invite me in. So I got three <laughs> listing appointments. Woo! Uh, and I've since listed and closed one of those, a little over 900,000. All so over one post. That was a good post. Um, so just doing stuff that's very, very real estate value related. And I love all these yes. parties and I've definitely got some great ideas on how to implement some things like that. But if you don't have a budget to do that and you don't have an HOA that you can work with, and just something along the lines of those posts yes. will probably get you some uh, interaction. Yep. Well, but also it speaks to your different personalities and how you're using that. You're not trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Right. You've heard this works, so you're going to try it. You're yeah, like this is me. Your what I do is all like right. that's just well, you've touched on it several times. You create it all. And what I yeah. know about you is you, you are very type A. You're highly, you like to control your environment. She enjoys delegating and you really yeah. thrive off of one-on-one -on -one exposure to people. So you're all doing completely different things that are generating the same results. So I de definitely want everybody to hear that. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to throw an Easter party to succeed or right. whatever. You can do some of these other tactics. You know, she's taking her method completely different than theirs. They're kind of doing the wide net and getting to know people that way. She's doing the kind of the mm -hmm. small pockets of people and getting to know the wide amount that way. So just to, everybody's still getting to know everybody. And the theme is they're all creating community, but they're putting themselves at the center of it. Mm -hmm. I will add, um, I did the same post that Sonia did. I think we were WAG partners and we were both saying, oh yeah, we're both doing the same thing yep. that week. Um, when I did mine a year ago, February, when the appraisals came out and the values increased and I put that post out and I got 28 responses oh, for oh. people asking for comps to help get their value down. And um, I've had, that's what really set me apart from anybody else. And I think that's what um, kind of catapulted me to be the neighborhood expert. Um, I've had so many referrals from other uh, neighbors not even necessarily in our neighborhood, but outside of our neighbors, outside of our neighborhood. And um, I even had at our Easter event that we had, one of the neighbors came up and he said, hey, I just want to thank you again for helping me 14 months ago get my tax, uh, my tax, um, work through my tax appraisal. Yes. Um, so people remember that because oh, they yeah. appreciate you helping them. So that's the one thing that I did that really helped me meet a lot of people and got me a lot of business. So when you did that of the 30 something that responded, 
were most of them strangers to you at the time? Yeah, ninety eight percent. So see, that's awesome. That's really good results right there. And I can't post that because I don't have time for a hundred, like eleven right. hundred homes. Yeah. But because I already get thirty or forty messages exactly. during this time. Yes. And I'm trying to do it, get to everybody while I'm doing everything else. So. Yes. But I don't need it more than that. People are coming to you as the resource for that, which is they are. So automatically they think, yeah, if they have a question, so they'll just. But in your community, because of the size of it and because of your profile and the social events, those 30 people that are coming to you naturally are likely telling their neighbors, hey, if you need help, there's people that. And then you're getting organic people that way as well. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's a good idea would be. for you guys that are wanting to farm your neighborhood, if you don't have time and you live in a large community like that, just create a video that says, hey, I know all of our values just went up. Um, if you're wanting to get your value down or if you're wanting to get your tax rate down, whatever you're trying to do, just make sure your homestead exemptions on your house because that's going to help yeah, you more than anything right? because it's going to cap yeah. and explain what a homestead exemption is and what it does for you because people do not understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I would say. Just Create a video, put it out there. You've created yourself as um, the expert and you know what you're talking about, but you don't have to get back with, you know, 500 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it can be little touches too. Like I know Sonia, you didn't mention this, but one of the things I've always loved that she does is she does the little flags down her street. Say that. Yeah, Yeah, 4th of July. So what I did the first time I thought about this, I didn't know many people. And so I didn't want to put flags in people's yards that I didn't know. I just thought that might be a... I don't know, didn't yeah. want people to be upset with that. So I flagged Spray my yard. Show. Yeah, I know. So I flagged my yard, meaning I had, the, the flags are pretty, they're not real tiny. They're maybe this tall on a stick, so I'm this big of the flag. So they're kind of sizable. So I would like have four down the drive and five across the street. And I took a picture of my yard flag, posted it and said, who wants flags? Message me and or comment. So then I'd get another one. So then I go out and flag them and then so but we've done it several years now so it grows. We have most of our street done now. And but they still have to they have to tell me they want it. But that's, so that's similar to her thing. It, it's them it's yeah. engaging with you and that's like a, a next level of I'm not just outbound. I'm also expecting mm-hmm. inbound reciprocation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that you do that I really like that I think is affordable and reasonable is she's good about bringing outside of the community into the community. She'll do these videos where she'll talk about new things that are happening around her neighborhood or businesses that have come in. She also does a lot of business to business marketing. So she's able to lace that into her neighborhood. Do any of you provide vendors to your neighbors? Do do you have vendor directories and things like that? I mean, I don't have an official one. Okay, that's mm-hmm. me. But they reach out. But they for reach it. out, and I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And other than Facebook, is anybody using any other digital advertising at all? Are you posting your just listed, your just sold? Do you use yes. next door? Do you? I do just on the name on the Facebook page. I have this coming soon. Or this that's awesome. Active tomorrow, and these ones that I have sold. And yes, these ones are pending. And, so what I actually, um, I was about to say no, but then I did the other day. So right across the street from me, a uh, house went on the MLS is coming soon. So nobody out there saw it, um, just me, uh, agents. Um, and the the, buy, the listing agent ha- had sold them that house when they purchased it. So I was good with that, you know. <laughs> I always want my people to be faithful too, even though I didn't like someone else's sign in my street. So she had already called me a little earlier asking me for information about one of my other sales. So she was trying to get comps. And so I had spoken with her. So I, I called her up and said, can I, so she's not a member of my neighborhood. So she's not on my Facebook page and her seller was not active at all on social media that I could see. So I asked her, can I post your listing in our Facebook page? We have a lot of people that move within the neighborhood. I mean, I have never lived anywhere that so, so many people want to just move up and down sizes and stay in the same neighborhood. It's awesome. So I explained that and I told her, can I do this? And she said, oh, absolutely. Yes, go to my, uh, she had it already out on her Facebook business page. She said, go share that post. So I'm like, yes. So then I shared this post. Hey guys, I know other people want to move around in the neighborhood. Um, this house is coming soon. Message me for a private showing. And then I know I could kind of hear the other agents going, Ugh. you know, because they didn't think about it, didn't see yeah, it quickly enough. It looks like it's my right? yeah. listing. It's not, I mean, clearly it's not my listing, but 
I'm a neighborhood expert reminding people hey, here's another house coming on the market because at that time it wasn't even that. well and you did the same thing with the million dollar house which i love because right. you're still establishing that you are that person that they go to for all yeah. real estate questions whether it was you or not that mm -hmm. yeah and it establishes a trust that they can later come to you and ask you questions maybe they want to vent about their agent maybe they wish they would have hired you so if you don't have your own active inventory there you can do do that just do other people's stuff if you ask them they don't they want it marketed so for sure i want to leave a little time for questions here at the end but i do want to ask you guys um what advice you guys would give people who have never started to get into their neighborhood i mean obviously we know see if there's a Facebook, but what else would you, what else would you say starting out? Would you tell them to look at how many homes are being sold by other agents at all? Or would you tell them to just go? What would you tell people? Yeah, maybe see if anyone else has a lockdown because it's once they do, it's hard to get in there. I know Villages of Woodland Springs, I think they have like three agents or four that are the big names in there. So when I first lived, when I first moved to Texas, I was trying to kind of get in there and I was lost in that mix as those agents have been, have locked that down. And so I was like, I just, this is a no win for me. So do you realize I you don't want to spend time? Uh, yeah, resources? I mean, yeah, of I course that. there's other agents in my neighborhood that market. And I have one that in particular that loves to do the same gift that I do almost the day after I do my, which is totally fine. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> 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 yes. I mean, I will post like, you know, I'm doing my pies the next day. I'm about to drop off a bunch of Christmas goodies. I mean, she fall. It's almost within, it's within 24 hours. She's right behind me and it's fine. They notice it. She's fine. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's flattering. You know, they say imitation is what, whatever. Well, this it's is a what, little annoying, but it is so annoying. So <laughs> the agent, there's another agent in my neighborhood. She doesn't live there anymore. She's moved out, but I think she just decided she was giving up and she mailed out postcards a couple weeks ago. Actually, she's mailed them out twice. Not since. She I will sell your house for 5%. Oh, it's like, oh, no, whatever. She's not yeah. the expert, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So my, I think my next, yeah. yeah, I think my next mailers should be, um, if you think hiring in, uh, professional is expensive. Wait till you hire an amateur. Yeah. That is the shade of a mature tree. <laughs> right. <is that? laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, what about you, Sonia? What would you tell people? I would say um, anything takes time. And we talked about this being a farm and it's a strategy for the long term. So be committed to it. Anything that you do to generate real estate leads in any capacity, if you just dabble in it, it's a total waste of money and you never not do anything with your time or your dollars. So figure out if, if it's something you want to do and have a plan and a strategy for, I would say you have to for at least a year without any expect expectation of return. Uh, and then after that time, then you should start seeing really good returns. Yeah. But you have to be consistent and invested in it personally and financially well and another thing i've noticed about all three of you is you've all touched on either another agent living in the neighborhood they ain't scared they've touched on agents breathing down their neck other agents selling a house that they wish they would have sold but they are still going forward with that i'm the professional in your area establishment regardless of what's going on which goes back to your consistency right and after a while when you get that presence of the expert people just assume that you're doing it so did you did you sell that house i mean uh, seriously no. and your answer is no, it's sold for this much know, yeah <laughs> i mean that's the thing they start it's it takes on a life of its own and there's an assumption there that you're maybe busier than you really are in that neighborhood but that that's okay too you can't have them all but um just just being there and that giving 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 of advice and, time. and it takes a while to come back to you so yesterday i picked up a new listing that goes active next weekend older couple and i went over there and i said i think i brought movie tickets to you a few years ago he oh, said yeah four years ago and i kept your car so four years ago <laughs> i, I gave that. him here movie tickets and now i'm listing his house same with like, I had like one pie left when I was driving around, it was getting dark. And so I knocked on a door and this gal opens. I'm like, sorry, this is weird, but you know, I'm I love like, that. Wait, 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 happy Thanksgiving. She's like, okay. And then she called me 18 months later. I sold her home for over four and she bought in Canyon Falls for seven something. That's amazing. On a six dollar pumpkin pie. And you just knocked on no, camera. And I just knocked on, yeah. So, just but I like that you said this is weird, but I have a pie. I know, authentic. 
Yes. We were not trying to knock on the door and be like, hello, yeah. I'm here to meet you. <laughs> no. Not a local realtor. I mean, she was her through and through. You know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I would say if you want to, one of the things you can do that I tell all the people I wag with and mentees or whatever, if you're going to try to be an expert in a neighborhood or you want to establish yourself to do that, you need to preview every single house that yes. comes on the market because you need to say, oh, you, because people are going to ask you, that house is sold over there, it sold for three eighty five. Well, actually, I was in that house and they had remodeled everything, had quartz countertops, it had a excellent. pool. Yes. Like, you need to be able to talk about it off the top of your head like you were just in there yesterday. Well, before this market comps don't matter anymore, but before when we, we could zero in on price per square foot for the size of your home, some of it just stopped me and asked me, like, I, my, this is, you know, how big my house is. I'm like, well, your, price, your range is this. I mean, I could just spit it up and say, watch the neighborhood every day. Now I'm like, I can't, I got, <laughs> first of all, I got to see your house, but then I got to sit down because it's by a 50, $60,000 range at this point. So, so that's, it's, different times, but I would be able to at least give them a pretty tight range because I was constantly watching it. One last question that you guys just made me think of, of because you, you all three do a substantial amount of business. How much of that business that you do, because we all see them on awards consistently, right? So how much of that annual business do you think is from your neighborhood? You don't have to give me a number specific, just, I mean, is it 50%? Is it 90%? I can tell you, I'm still growing mine. Yeah. Over the next 12 months, I know I'm going to probably have eight um, either referrals or sales in the neighborhood, like at least eight. I like that um, you said referrals too, because yeah. also you said referrals like, come yeah. from outside your neighborhood to your house. Yeah. From yes. people inside yeah. your neighborhood who refer you to their coworkers yes. or their family members or their renters and they buy somewhere else. Yeah. So, you know. I don't track my stuff, but a lot. But you think a good a portion lot. of it? A lot. Okay. A That's lot. Great. Sonia? So my answer is a little bit differently, uh, different because my business is entirely by referral, but what I focus on is a personal database, you know, that I did a completely program. And so, you know, 80 something percent of my business comes out of this group of people. And then I have business to business, which is a little bit separated, but there's a fine line because sometimes my business people end up in my database and then there's my farm a geographical farm because i farm the people it's the same thing keeping in touch you know all that stuff so the geographical farm is very new because i've been selling 17 years and this is more like a two three year thing so that's a, a new portion of the, the whole so what comes from that is probably small in terms of a percentage i might say let's say 10 percent but a lot of those people, as I meet them and get to know them, they move into my database. So again, it's hard to say that it's farming. I don't keep it separate like yeah. that. But when I talk about the numbers before, the ROI was significant. And I would say that in my world, when I'm talking to Feeney, we don't start with a geographical farm. We start with people that we know already. And you work that when you've got that going. And you vote on other systems to get business and the so farm would be, and that's yeah. She is, but that's why I love crazy. This yeah. lady is a need. People no, ask me like, what are your systems? <laughs> don't I, I don't know. I have she's been so close to Kate coming to my training, but she just won't come well, in. Well then Jack, you don't need that. You're you don't need that. <laughs> so that's that's right. I'm a little piece of all of them. So that's why it gives me hope because they do all have such different personalities. Does oh, anybody else have hopeful. anything that they think? Yeah, there's hope for all of us. Yes. Do any of y'all have anything you think we left off the table that people should know? And then we'll open it up for some questions. Well, I'm just happy if you want to text or call or message me, if you want me to screenshot a couple of some of the giveaways I've done. I mean, it doesn't have to be 50 or 100. I didn't start with that. So be a couple $5 Starbucks gift cards, but make it fun and interactive. But I'm happy to share some of those giveaways over the last five years and just screenshot them for you because I do get a good response on that. So happy to help. I think you did excellent. So you okay, really are good. Erica, you have anything you want to more millet questions? Okay. So we have a couple other offices in here too. So if somebody in this room asks a question, I'll make sure to repeat it. If you guys want to ask a question, I can now see the chat. So you can either put it in the chat or you can unmute 
And you know, you can just manually raise your hand and say, hey, I have a question, either way. But Jean, you've got something right away. I just want to know if you in, in your Facebook group, when you started yours, so that's a little bit different, but when you kind of entered into your neighbor and Facebook groups, was there any pushback at all that you were sort of advertising in there? Did y'all hear that? My neighborhood Facebook group is run by a very small group of, of admins who are maybe a little bit difficult. And have you run into that at all? So she's asking about getting past the negative neighborhood Nellies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, if the yeah. rules once a month, they can do a business post and just keep it to once a month, but make it like really relative. Like, you know, maybe add value and be something fun in one post, you know? Well, and you touched on something too. Um, she's moving, but you could also slowly create that secondary I've already group. done a shampoo giveaway in my new neighborhood yeah. and all what thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 myself and said, you know, that we're buying on Dove Hill and we're going to go there and introduce myself. I've already gotten a listing out of that neighborhood by that one post because someone who's who's already built on the same street was living in the neighborhood for a year in Pecan Square next door while they built their home. Mm -hmm. So she needed to sell that one. And so I already got business out of my new neighborhood by one, by just posting once. I see there's no other real, it's a smaller neighborhood, but still. So I did a champagne giveaway in there already for New Year's and went out there and dropped at someone's door. So I'm going to start now doing more there. So, and then that, well, I have a suggestion. Yes. For that. So our, even though I created our page, we, I did have it set. I do have it set where you can only advertise on the first day of the month because we have a lot of Cincy people and, you know, things like that. It's like, oh my gosh, it's going to call the right page. So Tracy Amaya actually suggested, hey, you just need to ever, and I asked her, what should I do? She said, once a month, on the first day of the month. So, but what I have done is I created a separate group with just the ladies only. And I only invite people to that group for the ladies that have been some, to some of our events. So like tonight we're having a charcuterie event. So I know I'll meet a couple more ladies that I haven't met in the past. So we have a tighter group because we do live in a large neighborhood. So we have a tighter group like that. And yeah, I know who's on there. So I know we're not going to have Cincy advertising right. some videos every day. And, and I will say my neighbor. I love me some Cincy, but I'm not on my page where I'm trying to be the expert. I'm so, over it. I, um, you could create your own market info page and advertise it on that one day a month and right. have people join your own group. Yeah. And it's specifically for market updates. And then do your own giveaways in that group. Yeah, I just named mine Silverstone Ladies Group. So, and I did that in my last neighborhood too. It was very successful. Okay. And I, I, well, I was going to say, I think my, I, I do have to be careful. Um, and I've talked about like 100% of the posts I've ever made here. I mean, I, the two that I've made that I've talked about, I mean, it's not like I'm on there every day, um, unless it's just general, you know, being a person in the neighborhood. But I, with the layering approach and the, the presence of the groups and the mailing, when I make a post, like it's value. And mm -hmm. it was just information. In fact, the one that million dollar post that it really I did have to take that down. It got very controversial. Um, the post itself was was generic and, and awesome, and some people were just like, "That's great, that's great." And then we're like, "Well, I wouldn't pay a million dollars for a lot kind of And so yeah. you you get down, trolls, repost trolls, it with yeah. no comments. Which I didn't even know you could do, but you can post it with no comments. So I've done that on the other ones. Ooh. So. Um, it's not that I use that really to promote myself. I do have to be very, I do feel you need to be a little cautious on that. Oh, yeah. But if it's once or twice a year, which is what mine has been with value. Okay. Well, and some of these, um, the, the less expensive, more complimentary events, you could post the invite to that on the once a month or, or rarely. And then I think kind of what has started to happen in their neighborhoods, those admins will eventually want to be a part of it because at some point the HOA is like, okay, this chick's going to be doing these events. You know, we are the HOA. She's having these events. How can we get involved so that we're also keeping that synergy in our own community? 
So I think at some point it flips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does in my neighborhood. And now I see a lot of, um, somebody will ask a question, is this allowed in our neighborhood? And they'll say, I don't know, ask Tina McNew. <laughs> Ooh, and it's like, love that. everybody's <laughs> asked Tina McNew. So yeah, they kind of established me as an expert. I didn't have to do it myself. I so it was that. nice. But you did do it yourself. I did, but I didn't do it so in your face. Yes. Yeah, so it's like, right. Right. you just become that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you do it by example. That's really what it is. Yeah. You know, you're attracting people to you. You don't call you. yourself that. You're just, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I, Kathy? About these events, we have a beautiful event center at our, in our neighborhood. And the, first of all, one of the owners is an agent that is, you know, her focus is the event center. But really, it's not a friendly place. It should be, but it's not. It's, it's a whole, it's a mess. And, and they really just want to do outside events. They don't want, I mean, they will help participate in the neighborhood, but they really just have a bad rep. Mm -hmm. okay. Change it. You I, have the ability to change I'm kind it. Of, I kind of feel like, should I rent out the event center for these events or should I have people at my house? I don't mind have, I've had meet and greets at my house because they have quarterly meet and greets and I always, you know, hope that, that volunteer to host them because it works out really well. I don't have to advertise that I'm the agent yes. because I am the agent of the neighborhood. There's other agents in there and there's other people that sell it. But our team, we sell the most in that neighborhood. But I kind of am on that line. I don't know really what to do about that. Do you think I should rent out the yes. center yes. or continue? People, I think, would probably come more to something like yeah. that than feel at my house. house. It would, yeah. Unless it's a ladies' group or something that's right. a little more personal, I feel like they would show up to the event center. You know, I'll tell you exactly what I would do. I would rent that event center. I don't care how much it costs. I would invite 25, the first 25 people to sign up for a charcuterie event, have somebody come in, teach a charcuterie class, charge them $50. They get to leave with the board and their food. Yeah. And you want to see morale turn around in the neighborhood? You start doing things like that. Yes. And that'll help keep your cost down. Did you guys yeah, at the so other offices, did y'all yeah, at the other offices hear all that? Okay, cool. That's what we do. So we're doing tonight. Lori has a question and Jill has a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two questions and a comment. It's a great idea. three questions just now where does Sonia <laughs> where does Sonia get her marketing can Haley send her the screenshots and do a wine walk instead of a cake walk no, sometime addition, to mix it up in addition to a box wine walk <laughs> she did a box wine walk and it went over really good okay Sonia tell them about your marketing do you mind if we send one of those to buy the product and link up here you and I are in the okay so she's the marketing that Lori is asking Sonia about that Sonia's about to answer. She's going to send one over <laughs> towards Weatherford for people who want to touch and feel that Tuesday and your crew. And then also we all know where Sonia's office is in Southwick. Okay. It's Tuesday by herself. There's a, I think there's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Totally. You're not. You're, you're with us in spirit. We love you. It's okay. Totally. Sonia, where do so, you get to market? Uh, the company's out of California. It's called Real Marketing. So what's the best way to get that information out there? Like, just have them look into it or? Yeah, just Google. Just, it's, 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 okay. The owner's name is David. It's a great company. Uh, we brought it to South Lake uh, eight, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have all kinds of other problems too. Right, and they, they have, yes, they do. They have a whole suite. Like you can start with the mailing and then if you want to do just listed, just sold, 
cards in the same neighborhood. You just tell them the address and they create it. It looks, the look and feel just the same. They've got the database. Uh, they can create new websites. I have never gone actually past this piece, but it is a whole track of marketing if you want to invest in it. And then they have different programs for different amounts. Like I said, this is the, the cheaper one, the, the $1 piece, which is kind of newer that they didn't used to have that. But if you want to use it more like a newsletter, when there's a portion of those pages that you send material to them every month, and you can um, advertise your own listings, you can advertise your events. If you want to use it like that, then there's an opportunity to do that as well. And you keep it looking the same, right? So they come to expect it every month. Like they're, they're looking for it. Now. Just and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Every, every month. month. And it's the neighborhood pictures on there are like I took those pictures <coughs> and worked with a designer to design the look and feel of it. And when it's right, that's what the setup covers. Because when it's right, it just goes. It, Kathy wants to know if it comes in an envelope. No. It's on the back of it, which I think helps. It's the postcard concept where even if they're throwing it away, they see it on their way to the trash. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just Tina has a question, but also Jill had a question. Is yours in response to the real marketing? Yes. Let's keep going on that vein and then we'll come right back to Jill. So do they update it for you? Yes, ma'am. They pull the MLS. Yeah. We work, we work with them what your catchment area is. It doesn't have to be all one neighborhood. They'll, you know, they map it. And for a while there, I had three different neighborhoods actually, okay. and three different pictures. It was very confusing. So you just determine where your database is, and then they pull those MLS numbers every month, and they create awesome. these statistics. They do a really good job on the content because you, know, with the best one in the world, you you have to do something every month to generate something like this. It's like oh, hundreds of yeah, yeah. but they pull like all the ones sold and all, all that and then they have a little theme i can't remember what's going around but they'll do like a uh, look back at so year over year numbers yeah, and I'm they do sure. all of that but what i think is appealing not only the quality but someone opened it up and said that little map i mean you just want to look at your house mm -hmm. on the map mm -hmm. i mean you want to see where you oh that is my neighbor's house and doesn't have sold values of course because that's non-compliant here mm -hmm. and so they have to call you for the what they want to know which is the yeah. sold amounts oh, i love that's that good. jill so that was a lot of my question but i also have to okay um uh, so does your neighborhood have events like my neighborhood has a lot of events that they put on themselves so like everything that i would want to do so do well really? jill is jill is asking if anybody's if sonia's neighborhood already has events because her neighborhood does we're in a big transition because we went from um, getting brand new and the hoa being run by the developer and they had bookups of money which ended up being our money, we didn't realize they were spending. So we had a whole organized slew of social events when I first got there. And so I would just help sponsor little bits of it. Okay. Now they're not all traded and we don't even have an, uh, we don't have an event planner now for the neighborhood at all. So then the volunteers in the neighborhood are, are just beginning to create their own social committee with events going forward. Okay. And it, and we're, like it, it's a big mess right now because there's just different personalities involved, and we've got to figure it, figure it out and find our way forward. To be honest, mm -hmm. so what I'm learning from today, and I was just saying, I wish I had a pen and paper. I want I am going to start taking some of these ideas, particularly what Tina was talking about, and do my own event anyway. And it doesn't have to be yeah, like do the more, whole do more. Yeah. 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 So but, yeah. Well, so uh, yeah, if there's events that you can plug into, maybe just a sponsorship will give you some presence. So they don't allow us to do that. Okay. Uh, but it is about to switch over. So we're almost. How can they say no? Uh, like, how can they say no? I don't know. Like, that, I'm actually, as I was sitting there, I was messaging the people on the HR who are in charge, asking them what is allowed and what's not. Um, I know Haley's neighborhood. I'm on her page, and my mother in law lives there, and she actually tries to get all of her giveaways, which is funny. First um, <laughs> <laughs> one is here. And I like, think you're like, she was Howard to doing this. I'm like, no, I was like, Amy Howard's house is being <laughs> <laughs> She like y'all didn't hear that. Um, Jill's mother-in-law lives in Haley's neighborhood and, and always relays what Haley's doing to Jill. <laughs> Jill, you know what I would suggest? I would just do your street. Have a crawfish boil or a barbecue cook-off or something like that, and just do your Brian's street. Brian's in. Yeah. Everybody loves Brian. Everybody loves Brian. Um, 
You got your sponsor right there. Um, but what I wrote loves right. Would they so care? care? Yes, well, yeah. like, like yeah. she That's does what her kids pull out a big. I'm sorry. Well, she does that. where her daughter's pulling the thing. You just have Brian pull it. Yes. <laughs> That's why Jason's not a police officer anymore. He's selling real estate because everybody loves him. I'm like, you're coming with me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're turning your retirement papers. We're done. Yeah. You're going to sell real estate. So. But I think the idea of starting small, that's why there was the flags on my street. And I had people drive by and say, can I have flags? So they live like three streets away. I'm like, sure. Oh, I do have a, I have another suggestion. What a, I didn't do this, but one of my neighbors did on our street. She just started on our street and she did a cookie exchange. So every Christmas, she, everybody takes their 12 cookies or 12 different sets of cookies to her house. She puts them together in a cute package and she hand delivers them. She's not a oh. realtor. She just does it because so she they don't even have to mingle at the event per se. It's her yeah. doing the, oh, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she'll say, so she'll say, okay, she hands out a flyer and she said, if you want to participate, this is a day you need to have your baked goods to my house. And then I'll be handing them out Saturday. And um, so, yeah, it's okay. pretty cool, but I would just start with your street. It's like it makes me nervous. I don't know why. I know. I hate it. I'm not social like that. I'm very social. I get it. Like, Come over next oh, weekend. We'll do one. <laughs> there you go. I can tell you how to do it, but. I don't know why. I get home and I'm like, I don't want anybody not to know what to wear. Yeah. I don't. 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 Yes, but wouldn't oh, it be lovely to be selling all the houses within a 0. 0.1 mile radius of your house? That's why for the first two years, I didn't really leave my house. I didn't know any of my neighbors. I'm like, this has to change. I'm so spoiled by selling in my neighborhood. And there's nothing better than walking down the street and putting a house up for sale um, and not having to drive to Frisco or somewhere like that to haul buyers around. It's <laughs> it's the easier way to do it, I will tell you. And actually, they like it because they're close by. Yes. So I always say, like, especially in this market, pack up your kids and go camping or do whatever for the weekend. And I'm right down the street. So I got you. I'll go shut lights off. I'll make sure everything's Ooh, locked up. I like, love that. And then a lot of them will say, that's kind of why we chose it, too. You know, you'll keep an eye on yes. the house and stuff. And um, and that you're close. So that's awesome. they do like to use a neighborhood. Agent well, well, and so. that, that brings up too one thing you're very good at um, is she will take those reviews from her neighbors and make sure that all the other people see those reviews. And I think that's important because it's not, it's somebody that lives in their neighborhood giving them a positive experience yeah. feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions from any of the offices? Everybody good? I don't know if I can steal a couple of these names from your events, Haley. What's or that? I come up with my own name. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can I, go, can I do steal your beer and bingo? Yeah. Name? They want to know if they can use the name <laughs> of Haley's <laughs> events, the beer and bingo in their own neighborhood. Uh, I mean, I don't care. Oh, uh, yeah. She's fine with it as long as it's not Tahama Rich. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to say thank you all so much for coming to the first agent panel. I want to reiterate that we want to do this monthly, but it would be most successful if we know what you want to hear from your fellow agents, who you want to hear it from. You're welcome to send me your specialties if you feel like you have something to share with the group. This is being recorded. And if you are here in Fort Worth, I know that Destiny is bringing lunch soon from Reliant. Tuesday, thank you for hanging with us in Weatherford and <laughs> South Lake Peeps. Y'all had a full office for a little bit. Amanda and Jared. It's like Jared's. It's, yeah, I see Amanda Panda. <laughs> yep. Okay, thank you guys. We're good. Okay, thank you. Guys.